Howdy folks, welcome back to the Elite Dangerous Combat Alpha Test with the Mighty Jingles. Now, as promised in the previous video, you are going to see my fumbling attempts at trying to control this thing with a joystick later on in this video. But first, there's one of the more advanced combat scenarios where I really started to get used to flying with the mouse and keyboard. Initially, I was convinced that this was definitely going to be... Uh, the kind of game where if you weren't using a joystick and throttle you may as well go home but it, that's definitely not the case it's definitely 100 percent playable with mouse and keyboard if uh, if my pathetic efforts are anything to judge by now this scenario involves yourself and a wingman both flying piddly little sidewinders immediately coming under attack by a very very dangerous cobra mark 3 and before I've even seen him, he's already got a missile lock on me. So right now I'm just concentrating on flying evasive actions. And where the hell is he? There he is. Right. Oh, I don't even know what weapons I've got. <sighs> Deploy the weapons, Jingles, you noob. There we go. Oh, great. Multi-cannons. Now, unlike firing lasers, you have to give some lead with projectile weapons. The game does give you a target lead indicator. I'm just not sure about the maximum effective range. There we go. Let's go on some hits. My shields are holding. His are about to fail. There we go. Hold damage. Good stuff. Hang on a minute. Oh no, there we go. Yeah. For a second there, the targeting computer was telling me his hull was undamaged. He got his hull down at 92%. His shields are coming back up. I need to keep putting fire into him. Otherwise he's going to get his shields back. Guns are running out of ammo. They're reloading. His shields are recharging. But so are mine. There we go. More hull damage. What's my wingman doing? Oh, wingman's on his tail. Go on. Finish him. Trying to catch up. Oh, yep. Wingman's putting some fire in him. There we go. So, that was the first of the combat scenarios where the opponent you're flying against actually represented a significant challenge. But I'm getting confident enough in mouse and keyboard flying to be able to handle it. Okay, this time around, as promised, I'm attempting to learn the way of the joystick, but it's been a while. I have myself a Thrustmaster HOTAS X. It cost me £50. It's a very good joystick and throttle combination, but I have no idea how to use it. It's been a long, long time since I attempted a flight sim of any description using a joystick. I'm just checking which button selects target ahead because I couldn't figure it out at first. There we go, joystick button three. Okay, let's get this show on the road. So, um, I've started myself off gently. This is the first combat scenario, if you like. It's the second scenario in the game and it's the first time, well, I'll say the game's the second scenario in the combat test. It's not a game yet. And this is the first time you come across an enemy who is going to fire back, and he is spectacularly incompetent. So if you fail this mission, you really, really suck. In case you're wondering, I, I have not actually failed this mission, but the first time I tried it, it did take me a very, very long time. <laughs> so I may as well have failed. So I'm still trying to figure out what all the buttons on this joystick throttle combo do. Aside from the obvious uh, fire and throttle, obviously I can roll, pitch, and yaw. The joystick has a, a twist rudder function. And I'm just trying to concentrate on not flying into any of the asteroids at first. Which is harder than it sounds, even if it's not particularly difficult. Uh, there we go, I accidentally... <laughs> I managed to select the target, but I also accidentally hit the afterburner. 
So a very, very unwelcome boost of speed there. Now, the, this guy isn't going to fire back until you start shooting at him. So I'm just trying to line up. But he is getting a bit suspicious, and he's accelerating. I'm going to try and match speeds. And I find the hardest thing to get used to in Elite Dangerous is that I'm used to leading the target, but there's no lead time with lasers. As you can see, he's not really putting much effort into evading, so... And things are going to get harder than that, but a little confidence booster in using the joystick for the first time in years. Okay, um, so it's time I did something slightly more difficult using the joystick and throttle. And this time, it's me against four enemies. Now, everybody is flying sidewinders, but it is four on one. Luckily, I do also have a missile pod this time, as well as a pulse laser. So I am more heavily armed than them, but there's four of them and just one of me. The other advantage that you have... Uh, too far away, I'll go for the one at the back of the pack. There he is. Is that they're not hostile until you open fire them, so you essentially get a free kill. Which only makes it a three on one. Hey, lucky me. And it took me a good four or five attempts using mouse and keyboard to complete this scenario and move on to the next one. Shields are taking hits. Bring this thing around. There it is. This one's locked. There we go. I'll find that it's tempting to wait until you get a missile lock and, and launch your missiles first, but I don't know if it's just my imagination, but it seems to be a better option to knock the shields down with your lasers. Or whatever you, or, you know, projectile weapons, whether you're using a multi cannon or any kind of a laser. Missiles seem to do more damage against the hull rather than the machines. There you go. Only seems to take two missiles to knock them out once the shields are down. And there. <laughs> That was surprisingly easy. And it took me a good three, four, four, five, maybe six attempts to get that that particular scenario done using mouse and keyboard. And I felt comfortable using the mouse and keyboard because I'm used to playing mouse and keyboard in War Thunder, for example. But here in Elite Dangerous, I mean, I haven't used a joystick. I, I tried to use a joystick to play War Thunder and failed horribly at it, and then I just put it away. And... The last time I used the joystick to fly anything was probably playing Freelancer 2 or X-Wing Alliance years ago. And it just it just seems that the joystick is definitely the way to go with this game. Not that you have to use a joystick. Um, as I said, I've managed to complete every one of the combat scenarios available in the Alpha using mouse and keyboard. And yet... Going back to using a joystick and throttle, it just seems much more intuitive. This particular scenario, which took me half a dozen attempts to get it right using mouse and keyboard, I got right on my third attempt using the joystick and the throttle. And the only reason I got it wrong the first two times I used the joystick and the throttle was because I didn't know which of my joystick buttons targeted the enemy in front of me. It's joystick button 3, but I didn't know which button was joystick button 3, and I kept fumbling my targeting so I couldn't use my missiles. If I'd gotten that right first time around, I am pretty confident that I could have nailed that scenario on the first attempt using the joystick and throttle. And just about the only real problem I've had using the joystick is that I'm, I'm not used to it, uh, and I mean that physically. Uh, after a while, I really started to feel a strain in my wrist from constantly, primarily from twisting to use the rudder. But you know, if you're a seasoned joystick user, you'll be used to that. Uh, it's not going to be a problem, and it's not going to be a problem for me once I get used to using it. 
So, this has been the Elite Dangerous Alpha Combat Test Phase 1, and I must emphasize that this is not the game. You know, this is just the Alpha Combat Test Phase 1. This is not representative of final gameplay. And yet, at the same time, it has been a lot of fun. It's been limited, obviously. There are only eight combat scenarios available to fly. But they do give you a good taste of what you can expect space combat to be like in Elite Dangerous. And of course, this is single player only as well. The multiplayer combat test is yet to come. And that's going to be a lot harder. So I found this very enjoyable. And it's just whetted my appetite for the Star Citizen dogfighting module as well. I can't wait to try that when it's eventually released and see how the two different games stack up. Either way, it's a very exciting time to be a fan of space combat games because we've got at least two big titles coming on the horizon. I, of course, will be doing my best to bring you information and gameplay from both Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen and will be bringing you more information as it becomes available. As always, folks, take care out there and I'll catch you next time.